Hey everybody, welcome to the Mana League. I'm John as always, and it's pre-release weekend. Dominaria is finally here, and uh, I'm heading out for a full weekend of pre-releases. Today, it's uh, Saturday, and we've got a 64-person, six-round event that I'm going to go to, and I uh, judge as well. And then tomorrow morning, we've got a smaller 16-person, four-round one. So uh, I'm just in the car, getting ready to head out. This set looks super, super fun. Um, I'm super excited to draft it. Sealed. <laughs> it's sealed. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But first, it's early. I need Starbucks. Grande Dark Roast, Spinach Feta Egg White Wrap, now I'm ready for magic. So we're going to head on over to the Hutton House, which is the uh, not-for-profit charity across the parking lot from the Gamers Emporium where uh, we can fit 64 people, and uh, we're going to go play some magic, so let's go. So as you may have noticed in that uh, quick play there, white wasn't super deep. It looked great with Sarah Angel and a promo to Char and three Avon sentries, and then boy did it fall off into uh, other stuff which wasn't very good. So white uh, I toyed around with a little bit, but relatively quickly got cut. Blue, on the other hand, uh, looked much more deep. I had doubled Naban, one of which was a promo, but surprise, Wizard's Trifle doesn't really exist. But I did have two Academy Drakes. I had an Academy Journey Mage, two blink of an eyes. Uh, I definitely thought that I wanted to be in blue. I really like Syncopate, and I wanted to give Precognition Field a try, along with Merfolk Trickster. Blue, I was fairly certain I was going to play. Black had an Eviscerate. And a Knight of Malice, and that's about all I can say about Black. Black very quickly got cut, but I knew I was going to splash that Eviscerate because I'm pretty sure this format is about removal. Red similarly had a uh, Fight with Fire and Wizard's Lightning, and that's about it. Two, double Flame of Kelds, I do want to try that out at some point to find if it's good. There is a, a, a Keldon, uh, the, the Steely Guy, uh, Goblin Chain Whirler, I think is just bad, and then a bunch of bad stuff, including almost a playset of Seismic Shift. Red was cut, but I wanted to splash that removal too. Green had a Multani, which, I mean, that sealed the deal right kind of there. I needed to play green, but it also had an Untamed Kavu. It had a Spore Swarm. It had uh, a bunch of Saperling creators, and it had Wild Onslaught, a card that I figured if I was making a bunch of uh, uh, Saperlings, why not? Plus, it had Fixing with Lanoir uh, Envoy, as mediocre as it might be. Artifacts had Skittering Surveyor, and that's about all I cared about because I knew I wanted to splash, and that was certainly going to get played. Jousting Lance is okay, I tried to find a spot for it. Partic Wanderer's fine, but didn't really have a spot, and then there was garbage. Gold, we had an Adeliz, and I promise I did try to make Wizard Tribal work, and the deck just wasn't there, but there was a Tatiova, and uh, green and blue was looking where I was headed towards, so Tatiova, very nice to see. Finally, we got our lands, we got a Sulphur Falls, which, hey, that's gonna help me splash those red things, and we got a blue and green tap land, and I think the blue and green tap lands are pretty darn good, with the blue one being the best, so very happy to see that too. And so this is the deck that we ended up with, blue-green, we've got Sapperling Producers, we've got Voldean Arcanist, we got Untamed Kabu, double blink and eye, there you see the red splash in Wizard's Lightning and Fight with Fire. We're splashing that by using a Lanoir Envoy, more Academy Drakes, and Yavimaya Shepherd. Skittering Save Surveyor also helping us splash. Spore Swarm so helping us create more Sapperling tokens. Eviscerate for the fourth color splash, Wild Onslaught, and Precognition Field to give it a try. A Syncopate, because boy, I love me a Syncopate. Tatiova makes it in. Academy Journey Mage makes it in. Of course, Maltani makes it in. And then here's the land base. Uh, it was... It was something, but let's hope it works out. <laughs> So round one's over and the deck's doing pretty good. It's doing exactly what it needs to do. I've been drawing first and drawing first has definitely been correct. Uh, I think for this format, especially for my deck, I need to hit those lands, need to get my mountains for the uh, fight with fire and wizard's lightning, need to get my swamp for the eviscerate. Um, unfortunately, I didn't quite win the first round. Uh, game one, I almost had him. Um, uh, he made a, a bad block 
and he would have died, so I let him take the block back and switch it over because he didn't see the trample. Um, and lost the next turn due to the crack back. Game two, uh, Multani just did what Multani does, which is be big and attack, and I took him down pretty quick. Game three was much more grindy. We almost went to time. Multani came down. He got killed twice. He came back uh, uh, once, I think, um, but Torgar uh, just couldn't do it. I was super close. I had him to four and had Wizard's Lightning in hand. I just couldn't get through that one extra point of damage. Mammoth Spiders are stupid. If you're playing green, you need to be playing Mammoth Spiders because you flat out don't have removal. And this is going to be kind of the, the thing that I come back to with Dominaria Sealed, is you have to have the black or white removal or you're not winning. You're not getting there because the red removal is so limited because it's burn, it has to be three damage or five damage. Green removal is garbage, blue removal doesn't exist. So I think black white is going to be the deck you play in sealed. And I think there are just going to be a large number of sealed pools that you can't win with because you don't have the black or white removal. It's unfortunate it's how sealed works. I don't think it's going to affect draft because gra draft you can kind of get the stuff you need, you can build a better deck. But round one, we got a loss. So let's go play round two and see how it goes. Uh, so round two just finished up. Um, I was at one of the bottom tables. I was at table 25 after that loss, unfortunately. And I was up against um, Tristan, who was playing blue, red, no, red, green. He was saying he was actually almost mono red. No, mono green, splashing red. He had Marwyn as kind of his bomb. He, he, he said his pool wasn't that great. His only removal, and I'm gonna harp on this some more, his only removal was Radiating Lightning, which he was main decking, which uh, kind of ruined my uh, Sapperling plan several several times as main deck Radiating Lightning just uh, wiped my board. Game one, I was able to take him down with Maltani. Game two, he took me down with uh, just big creatures and me not quite drawing. And then game three, I got the kicked uh, Sapperling Swarm into the kicked Wild Onslaught. I was attacking with uh, four 3-3 three, three Sapperlings. Pretty gross, and I took him down in three. So I'm one and one, we got four more rounds to go. I'm still feeling like we're gonna go three and three, so uh, let's try and get that three and three, but for now, time for lunch. So one thing that our pre-release does is uh, we actually give everybody a lunch break because you know it's a long day and it's kind of crappy to start in the morning and then miss lunch or have to bring your own lunch but there's no refrigeration or anything so it has to be like a granola bar or something. So we actually do give everybody about 25-35 minutes or so to go and grab food. We've got a subway out front, we've got a, a McDonald's across the street, we've got a Tim Hortons down the street a bit uh, but we also have a grocery store right across the corner and I figure that's usually my favorite place to go because you can get whatever the heck you want. All kinds of pre-made wraps and sandwiches and what not, and it's literally across the corner. You can probably see over there, there's a car dealership off in the distance. That's where the Gamers Emporium is. I was thinking I was smart and decided to drive over, and it took me 20 minutes to drive across the corner. I, uh, this intersection is one of the worst intersections in London for traffic. It's miserable. You can never turn. 20 minutes to cross the corner. I'm going to run, grab food, and get back there as quick as I can for round three. Round three's over. I was up against Alan, who I uh, tend to play every single time we play Clan Canlander, and I uh, have not lost to him because his deck can't beat mono red. His Canlander deck's really good, just can't beat mono red. But I wasn't playing mono red today, um, but boy, was I playing Zapperlings. Um, he was playing Baird, he was playing white, black, splashing a third color that I can't remember offhand. I think it was blue, possibly. Uh, but yeah, I just flooded the board with Sapperlings. Game one, uh, I had enough to sort of block and I was able to get through with uh, an Academy Drake in the air. And then game two, I flooded them out real early. I had, I think, six, and then I was able to attack in with um, uh, Wild Onslaught, which is really kind of working out in this deck. I think Wild Onslaught's actually really good if you can get the token deck to work. Uh, I don't think you put it in a deck that is not making a bunch of Sapperlings or a bunch of Soldiers or Knights or something, but it's done work here, so I won in two. I'm, I'm two and one. Uh, we could still make top eight. I doubt it, but uh, let's continue to try for that three and three. So see you guys for round four. So round four is over. Uh, I was up against Mike, who's uh, always great to play against. He always plays uh, dirtily shenanigans, or at least a lot of the time anyways. Today was a bit less dirtily. He was playing uh, white green, just kind of built itself. He had Sarah Angel, he had Shalai, he had a bunch of good stuff. 
didn't draw it though. Game one, he flooded out quite a bit and uh, I was able to sap Ling's Wild Onslaught again. That's really kind of the MVP. Um, I think probably underrated Wild Onslaught. The, the instant speed is really where it's super key. Plus the Sapperlings definitely help out. Again, I don't think you play it if you're not going wide with a bunch of tokens, but if you are, Wild Onslaught's pretty darn good. Game two was uh, uh, just slaughter. Uh, I got Multani out on curve, uh, Wizard's Lightning for the finish. Just really worked out. Uh, Multani is definitely, definitely a super high grade, super good card. Uh, so we're three and one, which means we have successfully made the three and three. So my, uh, my, my guess is going to at least be correct. Hopefully we can do better. Maybe we can go five and one. So uh, two rounds left. So let's see what we can do. So round five, we're coming up near the end. Uh, I was up against Justin, who is uh, who just changed his deck. Actually, he was three and one and decided to change the deck. Um, probably the right choice. He was pretty aggro -y and he's more stealing wins than he was actually getting wins. Um, the deck was terrifying. It had Verdant Force. It had Lyra Dawnbringer, who is 100% an A plus. That card is stupidly powerful. Um, he played it on me in two games. Game one, I was able to take him down. I was able to uh, draw the Eviscerate, kill her, and uh, get in for a bunch with Multani, because Multani was holding her back. Game two, he played her, and I couldn't do a thing about her, and so I lost game two pretty handily. Game three, I uh, got, again, Sapperling Swarm. I had five Sapperlings out, plus a Merfolk Trickster, plus a uh, Tatiova. Uh, Wild Onslaught counters on everything. I was able to do a significant point of damage. Uh, Lyra came down, I had the Eviscerate, killed her, and finished him off. So we are four and one, which means possibly guaranteed top 16. That loss in round one is going to be a problem, but if we can just win, then we can just top eight instead. So uh, final round coming up, hopefully we can five and one. Four and two would be fine as well, so let's go play. So round six is in the books. I was up against Sean. Sean is a fantastic magic player. And uh, he was on white, black, green. His black was a splash. Game one, he drew every single swamp in his deck, which certainly did help him out. I think he basically played an icy manipulator and a blood tallow candle. I think that was about it. And uh, so my sapperlings were able to just smash in again. The sapperlings, the sapperling deck is going to be extremely real. Mine's not even a sapperling deck. I don't have Slimefoot. I don't have um, the the uh, Spore Crown Thalid. All I have is making sapperlings. So that worked out pretty well. Game two, he uh, turned three Steel Leaf championed me and I turned four eviscerated it. So uh, he never got to hit with that. His plan was kind of all in on that too. So he didn't really get back in the game and Multani came down as a six, six, seven, seven, eight, eight. And uh, I stomped him. So I'm five and one. Uh, I'm guaranteed top eight. Uh, based on my reading of the standings and uh, currently I'm sitting in first but uh, I expect that to change because my opponent match win percentage is awful because of that round one loss so anyways I'm gonna go pick up some packs and then uh, I'm gonna head home for the night and get back here for pre-release in the morning So the results came in and I ended up finishing up third place overall because of all of the intentional draws at the top two tables. Uh, pretty good. After that first loss, I wasn't sure what was going to happen there, but coming back and going 5-0 and oh in rounds two through six was pretty good. So we're 5-1 and one for our first uh, paper Dominaria sealed event. Definitely a lot better than the, uh, the spiky Saturday sealed event, which did not go as well. The four colors worked out really well despite the somewhat lack of fixing. Um, I drew first every single chance that I could and it was definitely correct. Definitely make sure that you do that. A lot of decks in this format are going to want to draw first. Uh, but yeah, I got uh, 11 packs as everybody in the top eight did. Everybody in the uh, top 16 got themselves, I believe it was four packs, five packs, something like that. So I got a whole bunch of packs that uh, I need to do something with. So. We're going to do a bonus Crack-A-Pack. Uh, I introduced that new sponsored Crack-A-Pack idea at the start of the month and then realized there's one Crack-A-Pack Tuesday this week or this month. So we're going to do a bonus Crack-A-Pack, which is going to go out to a Patreon backer at the $5 level or above. So if you want to get in on this, you have got to make sure by May 1st, you uh, join the Patreon, manaleek.com, patreon.com slash the manaleek at the $5 level and above. 
uh, each crack -a pack Tuesday that we do, or in this case, bonus crack -a pack uh, one of the lucky patrons will get themselves every single card in that pack, or just the cards they want, or whatever. I'll contact them. So uh, let's figure out who that's going to be, and let's crack a pack. So here we are for our first bonus crack -a pack I have spun the wheel. By which I mean I copied all the patrons into a spreadsheet, assigned a random number, and then sorted largest to smallish. But it sounds a lot less fancy when I say it that way. And this is going to be the F2 Buttons pack. So uh, F2 Button, if you're watching, uh, you're going to let me know what cards you want from this pack. If you want the whole pack, if you want the rare, the foil, whatever else uh, is there that you want. And I'll message you on Patreon, Patreon to uh, get that information. So let's open this pack and see what we would take. Pack one, pick one. If this was a draft. Uh, first, we got Fire Elemental, three red red for a 5-4. Certainly not a first pick. Uh, an okay include at a filler level. Up next is Charge. Charge is a single white mana. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one until end of turn. Certainly not a first pick. Arcane Flight, a single blue mana for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one and has flying. Certainly not a first pick. I, I didn't really lose to this card at all in uh, the pre-release this weekend. Or sorry, uh, today, Saturday. Um, it, it can certainly blow you out, but I think it, this just gets two for one with a ton of stuff in the format. So I'm still going to be pretty nervous playing this. Up next is Warlord's Fury, a single red mana for a sorcery. Creatures you control gain first strike until end of turn, draw a card. Not super sold on it. Uh, the sorcery speed just really kills this for me, but uh, maybe you can do some weird stuff with uh, Quende. Up next is Gift of Growth. Gift of Growth is one in the green for an instant. Kicker two, dawn tap target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. If the spell was kicked, plus four, plus four until end of turn. This is a good combat trick. The untap clause is just super powerful. Super big fan of Gift of Growth. Never a first pick. You're picking this up mid-pack at the earliest. Up next is Soul Salvage. Soul Salvage is two and a black for a sorcery. Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Certainly not a first pick. Um, you, you've heard my discussion on these types of cards. I don't like them. I don't like them uh, less than I should. I, I should like them a little bit more. Kelden Raider, very good card. Two red red for a 4-3 creature human warrior. When Kelden Raider enters the battlefield, you may discard a card. If you do, draw a card. 4-3 for two red red is 100% playable at like the C level, maybe slightly C+, plus, like a low C+. Plus. The fact that you can rummage if you want to and you don't have to, super good. Kelden Raider, currently our first pick, which is a little bit sad. Pegasus Corsair is up next. Two and white for a creature. Pegasus 1-3 flyer. Whenever it attacks, target attacking creature gains flying until end of turn. Solid card. I was underwhelmed by it in my first online event that I did, but I think our deck was just kind of mediocre. I'll probably give this several more chances before I write it off, but I don't think it's ever a first pick. Certainly not over the Kelden Raider. Up next is Fungal Infection, something that will compete with that uh, uh, Kelden Raider. Single black mana for an instant. Target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Create a 1-1 one, one green Sapperling creature token. Super good. It's extremely similar to Skullduggery, and we all know how good Skullduggery was. Certainly a first pick in this pack. I think I would take it over Kelden Raider, at least for now. Rescue is a single blue mana for an instant at common. Return target permanent you control to its owner's hand. I don't like it. I think it's bad. Yes, you can do cute stuff with sagas. I don't think that's good or worthwhile. And uh, regardless, we're never first picking it. On to the uncommons. We've got Memorial to Unity. Memorial to Unity enters the battlefield tapped. It's a forest, basically. Uh, pay two and a green, tap it, sack it. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them, put it in your hand, then put the rest in the bottom of your library in any order. Totally fine. If you're green, you should probably be playing this. The only place that you don't is... I was going to say, I guess, aggro, or if you have a really sketchy mana base, but even then, it's still fine. It's just a good card. As soon as you're green and you're out of bombs and removal, you take this card and you play it. Uh, these memorials, except for the red one, are, are pretty darn good. Up next is Goblin Barrage. Goblin Barrage is three and a red for a sorcery at Uncommon. Kicker, sack an artifact or a goblin. Goblin Barrage deals four damage to target creature. If the spell was kicked, it also deals four damage to target uh, player or planeswalker. This, this always confuses me. I always look at this card and I go, oh, it's one of those goblin cards. I have to sack something to do something, right? But no, it is just four damage to a creature for four mana. That is super good. This is first pickable. This is probably our first pick, actually. And then if you have a goblin or artifact to sack, you can also deal four to your opponent. Uh, this is, I think, is our clear first pick over these two cards. These two cards can actually just go away. Our rare is Steel Leaf Champion. Steel Leaf Champion is green, green, green for a creature elf knight at rare. It's a 5-4 Steel Leaf Champion. Can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. This is obviously good if you're heavy green. And I mean heavy green. If you have 10 forests, you still only have a 48% chance of playing this on turn three. You need to be green 
to play this card and for it to be good. Um, it's still fine. It's still super efficient on later turns, but it starts to get much more easily blocked on those later turns. So I do have this as my third favorite of this for, of this set. It might actually go down to my fourth favorite. It might switch with the white one. Um, it's still probably first pickable in this pack. We'll keep it in there. And uh, our legendary slot, which isn't actually, actually a legendary slot. Remember that we got two on commons, the legendary is just at the back, is Arvod the Cursed. Arvod the Cursed is three white black for a legendary creature vampire knighted on common. It's a three three death touch lifelink. Other legendary creatures you control get plus two plus two. Arvod's fine. Arvod's pretty solid. If you're black white, Arvod is fantastic. I don't think I would first pick Arvod. I don't think uh, you're really kind of putting yourself into a specific deck there, and if you don't get enough legendaries, it is just a 3-3 Death Touch lifelink, which is fine. Um, it, I think it's probably in the running. I think these are the three cards here, Goblin Barrage, Steel Leaf Champion, and Arvod the Cursed. Uh, week one, I'm probably going with the Steel Leaf Champion, making sure that I grab every single Lanoir Elves that comes my way. Ultimately, when the format shakes out, I think Goblin Barrage is probably the correct pick here. So let me know what you would have taken uh, in the comments down below, and uh, we're going to continue on to pre-release number two. So see you then, and remember, this is the F2 Button Sponsored Pack. If you want a chance at getting all the cards, or if they just want the rare or whatever, uh, you need to go to patreon.com slash and sign up at the $5 level or above, and uh, you will be in the running for it. All right, so that's going to wrap up the first day of Dominaria pre-releases. I'm going to go have some homemade chili, some homemade beer, and some uh, carbonated water from my newly built kegerator. Super happy about that. I'm still hoping to do a, a video all about homebrewing beer at some point. I have no idea when, but uh, I'm gonna say goodnight to all of you and I'll see you in a, a few seconds in this video anyways, but uh, tomorrow morning for me for pre-release number two. Hey everybody, it is day two, it is early in the morning, it's not, it's not that early, it's 9.30, but I stayed up really late playing uh, an unrecorded, it should have been recorded, Friendly Sealed League on MTGO, where I'm again playing green, four color stuff with Navigator's Compass, Splashing, etc. I'm going to go on a crusade about Navigator's Compass. It is better than literally unplayable. I'm not saying it's good, do not quote me on that. It's better than literally unplayable if you're playing three, four, five colors. Uh, but we're back at the Gamers Emporium. We're going to do a four round sealed event, uh, hoping to do just as well as yesterday, if not maybe a little bit better. It's also an amazing day out. It's going to be like 15 degrees, which I'm sure for some of you is winter coat weather. I'm Canadian. I should probably be in shorts, and I'm barely joking there. Uh, long sleeves might even be a mistake, but let's go play some magic. I told him he wasn't recording. <laughs> 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 So opening up the pool, I saw in white that we had the Blessed Light and we had the uh, uh, the Knight of uh, Grace, along with a pair of Danithas, which seemed pretty good to me. Uh, there was also an Avon Sentry, as I said, I think Flyers is big in this format, and a Call the Cavalry. So okay, white, nothing super pulling me there other than the removal. Over in blue, we had stuff to continue flying with a pair of Academy Drakes, a Zahid, Jin of the Lamp, an Academy Journey Mage to help with bounce, another pair of Blink of the Eyes, a Syncopated Deep Freeze. Blue looked pretty darn good. A bunch of stuff kind of pulling me into blue. Black had a promo Yagmoth's Vile Offering, but uh, there actually wasn't that many legendaries in this pool, and beyond that, there was an Eviscerate. And that's about all there was going on in black. Red was perhaps my deepest color, by numbers at least, but uh, not been quality. Jaya Ballard, I don't think it's terribly playable and limited. We've got uh, some Aura stuff that matters. We got some minor Wizards Tribal and no real Wizards support. We got a Sheevan Fire, and that's kind of the best card in this entire picture. So Red, despite the number of cards, was cut pretty quick. Green, on the other hand, was pulling me, uh, partly because I'm really, really enjoying that green 4-5 color deck. Plus, there was a Verdant Force and a Llanowar Elves and some Sapperling production, uh, but then it just immediately falled off after those five cards. Everything else was kind of, eh. So green begrudgingly got the cut after some fiddling. 
The gold cards didn't really help us because red had gotten the cut, as did green, so Halar was right out and Adelie's, uh, I wasn't really gonna splash for her. The artifacts, though, the artifacts were cool. Icy Manipulator, Traxos, Juggernaut, Voltaic Servant, which is great with Icy Manipulator and Traxos. Joyra's familiar to help make them cheaper. A Mox Amber for value, but like Jaya, completely unplayable. So the artifacts were gonna really help fill in a color. The lands, however, didn't really help us as we had green, which was cut, red, which was cut, and black, was, which was cut memorials, and a black-white duel, as long, along with a Zulvir and Void. So we ended up in blue-white with Knight of Grace, Relic Runner, and Voltaic Servant to help that historic double blink of the eye Gideon's Reproach for removal bounce, Deep Freeze for removal as well. Three drops, we had the pair of Danithas, the Davenant Trapper, the Academy Drakes, because we were going to be flying historic. There's the historic cards with Juggernaut, Traxos, Joyos Familiar, more creatures and flyers, Icy Manipulator, Absolute All-Star, Syncopate, removal. Uh, uh, more creatures and bounce, and of course, Zahid, Jin of the Lamp, along with the Void. So round one's over. I was up against uh, George, who was playing uh, green, white. Uh, he had Multani, which I know from yesterday is terrifying. I was playing uh, blue-white, as uh, you guys saw in the start, and it ended up being an Icy Manipulator versus Icy Manipulator match. So my Icy Manipulator spent a lot of time icing his Icy. Uh, but the Flyers just got through. This format is pretty heavy on Flyers, so I think you should definitely take them highly. I won in two. It wasn't too, too difficult because of the Icy Manipulator. Turns out having that on four is just really good. So, want to know. Let's uh, hope we can keep it going. Round two uh, is over. I was up against Jacob. I haven't played Jacob before, but a uh, great guy. Um, he was on black green. He said his deck built itself. It had triple Lanoir Elves, which of course is disgusting in this format. Uh, luckily, he didn't typically see them until turn three or turn four. Um, he had Weather Light. One game I did syncopate it pretty quickly because that card is fine. It's kind of like a Sarah Angel. It's not amazing, but it's just real good. Real good for a flyer. Um, but I was able to get through with just historic uh, matters with Relic Runner and uh, Davenant Trapper got in and won game one relatively quick. Game two, uh, I got in in the air. Academy Drake, a Joyra's Familiar, Icy Manipulator, of course, cheaper because of Joyra's, Joyra's Familiar. There's a lot of sounds in the background of trying to very loudly talk over. Uh, um, but yeah, I took it down in two. So we're undefeated today, 4 0, 2 0 in matches, two matches left to go. I, I think I'm guaranteed top eight now at this point at 2 and 2 with, uh, without a loss. Let's see if we can uh, maybe get higher in the top eight, though. So round three is over. I was up against Marco, one of the only four, four two and O's at this point because we have a perfect 16 people. Uh, Marco is on red, black, Squee, Traxos, Varix, Bladewing. Looks like a hell of a good deck. Uh, at least six pieces of removal. I know that because in game two he played all six on turns two through seven, uh, um, but uh, he didn't quite have the creatures to follow up with it. And Icy Manipulator, again, that is just such a slam first pick card. It is super, super, super good. And my Flyers just got in. Again, 2-0, and so we're 3-0 and for the day. Um, in matches, we are 6-0 and in games. That puts me at 8-1 and for this weekend. One match left, um, I'll talk with Dan or Ben, whoever wins and we might just intentionally draw and split the packs. That way we each get seven instead of eight and six, and then we'll play for fun so I can report on that. But one match left to go, pretty good weekend so far. Let's finish it off. So round four just finished up. I was up against Ben. Uh, he was the only other 3-0. We decided to intentionally draw and split the packs. The payout was eight and six, so we each got seven and seven packs, but we played for fun to see how it went. Um, game one, I took him down relatively fast. Game two, I got stuck on two mana forever, and he completely demolished me there. And then game three, he got out Traxos and all kinds of stuff like that, so he took me down. So ended up tied for first place, first and second. Got ourselves seven packs each, so that puts me at uh, eight, one and one for the weekend, which is pretty darn good. So pretty happy about that. Mm -hmm. 